sucks. You're, you're saying 615. All right. Yeah. Frank's <coughs> phone says it's 615, and here we go. That's um, October 24th, and we're select board of the town of Rochester, and we have posted the agenda in three public places, right, and on the website, and emailed to interested parties so we can move forward in person and on Zoom. And if people don't know how to work Zoom, they should Google it and figure it out. But you can raise your hand when you want to speak. So there's a little button on the bottom to do that with. Um, we don't have any um, guests here. We have the prior meeting minutes from October 10th. And they looked pretty complete to me. Any okay. changes from you guys? No, sir. Nope. They look so good. Move to approve those minutes. A second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. And under new business, we've got a park use application from the library for a Halloween stories and crafts mm -hmm. on 1029 from 9 to 11 a.m. So not at night. <laughs> no, <laughs> free, uh, free trouble. Yeah. So I've got no problems with that. So I'd move to approve that. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, and and on, uh, another item on the new business is the 5x8 Constable Utility Trailer, which we have offered to multiple different um, Sheriff departments, and you've done a bunch of but, research on this. Yeah, we offered it to fire departments and anything that was nonprofit. It was purchased through the Vermont Safety Council through a grant application. In 2013, the trailer is a 2014. We can't sell it. Uh, and so I talked to this lady at uh, the agency, and her name was Sarah Webster, and she gave me the information that I needed to give her so we could process this thing and get rid of it and put it into somebody else's hands that can use it. And so we've talked to Ridgeline, I talked to Larry Strauss and Greg White uh, a couple months ago, um, I'm just getting around to finalizing everything, and it's basically we're just going to gift it because that's all we can do, and they'll be able to use it for storage of their light tools, and uh, they've got a DR trimmer, and they can use it going forward. Sarah thought it was a great idea and a great group to give it to, uh, so it's a non-profit, and that's what we had to give it to, so... It'll be a good asset for them, and they'll accept it. So, I'd like to a motion to. Uh, I guess you make the motion, or I can make well, the I'm motion. Well, I'm going to abstain because that? I'm involved you with the trail club. Motion. So okay, I won't well, that's myself or something. That's good. Um, I'd like to make the motion that we accept the the uh, offer that we have had towards gifting this trailer to the uh, Ridgeline people and. Uh, that would be it. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes All right. have it. Cool. All righty. Got uh, Miss Tony on there from the library? No. No. And um, we have um, Cooter's not here from the highway, but Frank, you said they were working on a culvert up on Sand Hill. He, up on Clay Hill, Clay they, were, Hill. Clay they Hill. were just, um, the road stops there short of the turnaround there, but they, they we use a, a Harvey land there to so we can turn our trucks around, and uh, there's a, a bad spot there, so Mike Harvey had purchased a new culvert, and John was going to help him, and the road crew was going to help him bring some fill in, and make it so that that doesn't wash out again. Last winter it washed out and it was just a mess there. And so they wanted to fix it and, and John wanted to get that done. Uh, we have uh, pretty much put the budget in, um, tried to make it as best we could. So that's about it. He's yep. just gearing up for winter. 
bought new tires for the grader. That's they don't give those away, but no, that I was, heard a mountain, and that was a, yeah, <coughs> there's probably some choice words coming out of the ground, yeah, yeah. I would imagine. That was a pretty big <laughs> boom. <laughs> yeah. Martha has a question. Pardon? Martha has a question. All right. She's raising her hand. I, I didn't know if this was the right time, but it has to do with a road crew. Every year I call the road crew uh, the week before Halloween and ask them to please remove the benches and the picnic tables from the park. And so I left them a message this morning and I, I haven't been out today, so I don't know if it's gotten done, but hopefully by the end of the week it will. They've been kind enough to do that every year. Yeah. Um, didn't know if I yeah. should mention that. Or no, no, it doesn't hurt to mention it. Thank you, Martha. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and the porta potties are also getting picked up. Yeah. Um, Terry, you got anything exciting on the? Um, so you no nope, utilities that you mentioned in there's definitely you can notice an uptick in the sewer usage over the weekends. Oh, you can see it all all yeah. summer is big big difference on the yeah. weekend versus during the week. So I think a lot of that is from the increased Airbnb traffic in town? Could be, yeah, that could be a lot of it though. Yeah. I mean, I didn't think of that, but yeah. that probably does play quite a part. Yeah. Probably but it's probably, you probably use three to 4,000 gallons more a day mm -hmm. on the weekend than in a holiday weekend, of course, goes three days. Yeah. Interesting. But, yeah. Is um, Jeff Gephardt on the in the world out there? Yes, he is. He's unmuting and coming to us here. All right. Uh, good evening, all. Um, good I've got uh, just a couple of things. Um, I sent uh, the board an email uh, last week uh, regarding a question being asked by the Bethel Energy Committee. Uh, the Bethel Energy Committee is applying for the Vermont Council on Rural Development's Climate Economy Resilient Communities Program. That's actually the same program we went through last year, but renamed. Um, and what they want to do as a part of their participation in that program is discuss with the Valley Towns um, and Randolph the possibility of hiring a regional energy coordinator. Um, and, uh, so it's, there's no commitment to moving forward, um, with that if, uh, you know, it was studied in, in Rochester or the other towns decided they would not want to go with it. But, uh, what they're asking is whether the town would be, um, open for the, and participate in a discussion toward that end. Um, I'd be happy as uh, either energy coordinator or as a uh, leader of the uh, Valley Energy and Climate Action Committee uh, to participate. Um, they, they really sound like they want energy coordinators, energy committee leaders, and a select board member from the towns that they are trying to engage in this. Um, so it, it's... Uh, you know, possible if, if one of the members of the board wanted to be a part of it rather than just have me report back as to how the talks are going. Um, that's uh, certainly within the what they're proposing and would desire here. So they're looking to hire a paid employee as a regional manager? Yep. Yes, they are. And, and uh, they actually, uh, in uh, the letter from Nicole Sear, um, talks about a couple of other activities that this that entity might be able to perform for multiple communities. I'm not looking to, uh, you know, leave the, the post of energy coordinator or, or stop leading the energy committee. Um, necessarily but uh you know it this is a model we've seen working in other vermont towns um uh, jeff martin with uh, two rivers uh, atacuichi is running a similar group um, as a regional coordinator um, uh, we actually did talk with them but they we were too far off the map uh, for what they had in, in mind so did they put forth any um 
request for contribution to a salary for such a coordinator? Uh, I think times? that 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 would be a part and parcel of the discussions, I believe. Yeah. Should should the towns agree to, um, you know, something consistent that then could be uh, identified in terms of a labor cost? I think it doesn't hurt to look at it. I, I mean, they're not asking for any money now. Town meeting. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, would, I would think appropriation. It I'm just trying to find the path to this, whether it's something that we would be plugging into a budget or would it become an appropriation? That would have something that we'd have to look into before we made any decision. Yeah, there's that, still, still a lot of questions there about the nuts and bolts. Right. The idea, the idea is, is fun, but how would we actually implement it? I think we have to look at it, but I don't know as if we want to. So I would be happy. I would be happy to, you know, attend the discussions on behalf of the town um, with the understanding that I have no authority um, and that any decisions would be that those of uh, the board or the community uh, with the board. Um, you know. And I, I, you know, certainly can report back as to uh, where where the discussions are going, and and uh, yeah, no, that'd be great, Jeff. I think that's um, that's a good good start. I yeah, it's yeah. A, it's a, it's going to be a tough budget year, so we mm -hmm. we will need to know you know all the ins and outs of this. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll attend and uh, or participate and and brief the board regularly. Um, should Great. they win this um, program? I mean, that, that, that isn't even known at this point. Right. right. Okay. The other issue um, is the north and south walls of the library. Um, I talked to Cody Downs, and he installed a piece of flashing running the, at least the length of the north side. I didn't look at the south. Um, it's right where the building, uh, the first floor and the second floor break, and there's a protruding piece of uh, millwork that uh, he put a, a water. Uh, yeah, a, a little uh, cap on. It's almost like a piece of drip drip, drip edge, but it wraps mm -hmm. around a little more. I have, you know, and it was what Cody was asked to do. Not faulting him in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, he. He got the piece of metal up underneath the clabbered without breaking them all up, and that's a challenge. Um, but uh, you know, we still have gaping holes in the window around a couple of the windows there, and I really suspect that we have water intrusion, um, whether it's on the on the second story or the first story. Um, what I don't see when I look in the holes in that building and, and what I didn't hear from Cody is that there's any kind of weather resistive barrier um, that uh, is installed on the building shingle fashion to keep pushing water to the outside. I think what is needed is to take a strip of cladding, the clabbered cladding and the other, the lower cladding um, off of the building from the top to the bottom to clearly identify the assembly and its needs. Um, it really, it's, it, it, I think to fix it, we're gonna wind up needing to strip at least the lower half, dependent upon where the water's coming in. If the water's coming in up above, it's really stripping the whole wall there to get a weather resistive barrier on and then close it back up. Jeff, can we meet with the, uh, you and I meet with this and go over some things on this at some point? Yeah, sure. That, and then, then we can have a chat about it. And I, I think what we have to do is have a uh, some kind of contractor come in and look at that and give us some idea of what they think they should do there and address it that way. Because it's going to take, I think it's going to take a crew to figure out what we need to do there in order to make this go away, so to speak. 
Well, I'm they're... pretty up on the building science on building science principles from my 28 years right. and doing that. So I, you know, it's it, it isn't a rocket science project here. It's it's just that we've yeah. got a wall that doesn't have a a, a drainage plane. Right, exactly. And and to see what that's going to encompass as far as what uh, what the time element for something like that would take and what the cost, a rough mm -hmm. estimate of the cost of fixing that. I mean, if we were to see, if we were to take that strip out, then I can, I could write up a scope of work for it at that point. Um, okay. I'm just not comfortable doing it blind. I really have to see what's going on behind the cladding. Right, exactly. I agree with you on that. So let's get together at some point here pretty soon and chat about that and we can maybe find somebody that could uh, help us with that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. I will be right. going to their next trustees meeting um, to talk about some things uh, um, involving um, uh, their website, thinking that their website might be a good location for some other resources, uh, a resource list in town. Um, so I think that's November 8th, which is the, the next trustees meeting. So if we could uh, meet before then, it would be great. Yep. All right. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate your uh, persistence on these. Uh, you're welcome. So in the um, old business, we had on the agenda, the master financial policy sections five through seven, and which is about the debt management policy and the thinking that this is something that should be discussed in the budget and finance committee um, a little bit more before we just um, outright adopt it. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, it's pretty complicated. It, yeah, it is. Yeah, a, there's a lot there. Yeah. It's not a yes, no question on a lot of that stuff. No, no. There's a lot of stuff involved there. So we'll table that until we've had a chance to to um, toss that around with the budget and finance gang. We we had the audit auditor here, right? Mm -hmm. Nathan was here. So did he have anything to say about the way things are going there? With, as far as how everything was working through, uh, he said things are going well. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't have any issues. No. And he knows that we're doing this financial policy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll table that so we can research that a little bit more. Um, on the um, <clears throat> another chunk of old business, the um, we'd been approached by um, Nick Darvaloff a month or two ago about this chunk of land that he bought up off of between Route 100 and South Hollow Lane, and he is. It sounds like he is interested in accessing his property from the South Hollow side. And that's um, which is using his his desires to use the legal trail to access his land. So that's um, a discussion that we're going to need to to expand about how we treat that. I think we need to bring in the, the planning board. This this involves um, the town plan and how we intend use of the um, legal trails versus a class three or four road. It also is um, factored in there is the, the desirability of expanding the tax base. And do we want to, um, you know, how do we treat that previously pretty wild chunk of land? Is that something that we want to encourage development or, you know, or not, but it's his property. Um, it's, um, it's not a decision we're going to make tonight, but if we, if he's going to request the, uh, the um, upgrading of that road, that's, that starts a whole other process of public hearings and, and such. So I just thought I'd give an update and he's decided that approaching it from Jerusalem Hill Road is too daunting, even though it would be a shorter section to his building site. And he's 
a little um, put off by the um, intensity of that road. So that's um, that's yeah. my report on that. He hasn't made an official request. He just emailed me saying that's that's his thoughts uh, as of this point. So that's um, uh, to be continued. To be continued. Yes. For, again and again, we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. Martha has something to say about that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Dune. I I didn't catch his name. Nick, I think, was the first name. But what was the Nick, last? Um, Darbeloff. It's D apostrophe. A R B E L O F F. Okay, and is the Definitely. A capitalized? The A, yep. Okay. At least so, on this email, it is. The D is okay. not. It's not? <laughs> not on this email, no. I don't think it is. Okay, no. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Sorry, I, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, thank you. no problem. <laughs> and the other. Um, piece of old business. We had a, a brief discussion in the last meeting about, um, uh, could you call it a sign or a, or a, or a warning that uh, on Bill Carlson's mm -hmm. barn, he has a, the back end of a, of a school bus um, mm -hmm. sign and he's communicated with me about his, um, he, his awareness of the zoning rules against lights or flashing lights on a sign so he's willing to de-energize that sign so it's not a flashing mm -hmm. flashing light but he also contends that it's at um, much higher than a legal height of a, of a truck or a log truck so he's not concerned that it's gonna gonna impede traffic in any way i you've looked at it i've seen it have you had a chance to oh i've been by it several times been by it several times yeah yeah i the only issue i think he, that comes up is is the building is it considered part of the building through zoning if you have a sign that sticks out and you have a building that's non-conforming is it part of the building in the village. I know when I was on the zoning board, you have a lot of structures that don't meet the setbacks mm -hmm. in the village. So whatever that structure was, including any steps or eaves mm -hmm. was considered part of that building. Right. So is, is it still that way in zoning or has that changed? Because if that is the case, he has in, made the, the encroachment even worse by having that there. I'm not, I'm not advocating mm -hmm. for removing yeah. it or anything else. John has purchased uh, four signs to put up there, mm -hmm. uh, two from coming in and two coming the other way uh, to warn about the danger of the, the yeah, drives. It's a right tight there. spot. A tight yeah, spot yeah. And, and, and I curve. instructed yeah. John to buy a couple of signs. He bought four. And they will be installing them up there, warning of the turn that's right there. So, yeah. and the blind corner, and and to, so hopefully that'll alleviate some of that, but no guarantee. So, and Bill was happy to hear that that we would do that. So yeah. I don't know, and I know we spent a lot of time doing it, but I would wonder if that does encroach on the road more because it is a non-conforming structure to begin with. Does it require a building permit? Is it uh, considered that's, a sign? That's the other thing I'm thinking. Well, that, those are more um, like business signs. And it's not really a business sign. That's kind of a ornamentation. <laughs> <laughs> so in the gray got, area. It's got yeah, a few of them. Yeah, there. ornamentations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good word for it. I know if you're <laughs> if you're going from north to south, it's it's much more imposing than if you're going from south to north. You right. Know, turn around and come back towards Rochester. It's like, wow, look at that. Well, I've not seen it lit up. I have neither. No. I have. <laughs> I have. What it's it's that? quite striking, striking to be <laughs> honest. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you got the red flashing lights up there. <laughs> Does a <laughs> that's what he's trying to yeah. do. I yeah, get, I, I get it. Yeah, he's yeah. commented that in the in the thirty years he's lived here, that road is, you know, we say his buildings are encroaching on the road. He feels that the road is encroached <laughs> on his buildings. It's it's much wider than it was when he bought the place. And, 
-hmm. but I know there's a, a town right away on the, on the class right. three road is what it is. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Horses have been bothered. I, I, you know, I asked him about, you know, what would it take for him to move it? I talked with him about that and he was like, you know, it, it he'd spent some money on putting mm -hmm. this thing together and he had scaffolding set up there to put it up and all that. And I, I understand where he's coming from. I would just think that it's a more of a question for zoning. I realize it's high enough, but if, if he does have braces that are lower there, so it's really a question of zoning for me, I'd say, but it does come right to the edge of the travel portion yeah. of the road. Kind of like so. mailboxes. Right. Yeah. Only it's higher. <laughs> Only it's higher. Much it's higher. Big, yeah. big, it's a bigger thing. Right. I mean, yeah. So, it, 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 a regular vehicle or even a dump truck probably is not tall enough to, no. to clip it if they were going by, but a long truck could be. Well, no, they right. can't be any higher than 15 feet because that's what yeah. the wires are. Yeah. So, so it, as far if zoning is fine with it, yeah. I know John said he didn't have an issue with it. Yeah. So, right. so I, I, but I have requested John to put signs up there. Yeah. Martha has her hand. Martha? I just wanted to tell you that um, when it was brought up at the last meeting, um, my boss, Tim Calibro, who's a photographer, he went up there um, and talked to Bill and took a picture. So there should be a picture with my article this week for the hair, you know, for the select board article. Of the, oh, of that, going to increase that traffic on the road because people are going to want to go see it. Go see <laughs> well, it. I can ask him not to put it in, but I'm not uh, in charge. No, I'm so. just kidding. I'm just kidding. He may, he may, he may not. They should go slow. Yeah. But I had told him about it. And so is it my understanding that you guys aren't going to make any decision about it tonight? You're just talking about it. Yeah, well, as, yeah. as Frank has pointed out, this might be more of a matter for the, um, the zoning planning than the select okay. board. All right, thank you. Yeah, but as, as um, he did recognize that the blinking lights were not in compliance, so he's going to not power them. Yeah. And, um, just think, um, yeah, his main concern is just the speed and, and how with the the good job that we're doing on the roads that people feel a lot um, like they can drive a lot faster than they probably should but it never hurts to mention that the um just because a speed limit is 35 doesn't mean you have to drive 35 miles an hour that's that's the limit not a manda mandatory thing so, i uh, i requested that john get some signs that that gave the warning uh, slower yeah. speed right there just to you yeah. know not to dictate that that's a speed limit but yeah. just yeah. a suggested speed there yeah. so whether they work or not who knows but at least it'll help uh, hopefully it yeah. helps um the um we also had kind of pending out there the agreement for the defender the um storm water unit down and we're still waiting on the as built from right. the engineers so exactly. really and i'll call Kristen again and yeah. see if i can't get them he said he would send them that was the last meeting and i'll give him another charge give him another okay yep. okay bone cool. him up again um that's all i had to add you guys got something to no yeah. anybody out in the in the room or on zoom that wants to speak about something um, hold on just one second. Robert Franks is on his computer and is unmuted and it looks like he's called in. So perhaps he has something he'd like to say. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey thank, thank you for taking, taking my, my call. call. Well, you got to either do the computer or the phone, but you right. got both going right now. Well, well uh, I've, been I've been focusing, focusing on, on a very, a very nice, nice comment, comment on this. On this Platform. Can you mute one of them? Actually, I'm muting. Says that you have to raise your hand, okay. and um, unfortunately, like Martha, I can't raise my hand because I don't have a camera on my computer, and I attend many Zoom Zoom meetings where there's an icon at the bottom of the screen when you want to raise your hand, and it puts a square around your name. So there's something not right. Um, but that's, you know, that's maybe something that Kristen and Julie can look into. So the last meeting, I was 
kind of laughed at be, it, with the fact that I couldn't raise my hand. Well, it's a fact. I could not raise my hand. So, you know, let's let's move on um, with there's some sense of humor. I thought of uh, Frank with regards to uh, Bill Carlson up on town line. He probably would have paid a thousand dollars for that four by eight blinking uh, traffic sign uh, and take his school bus sign down. Uh, just a couple of facts. Bill Bill has been trying to reduce the speed of trucks and cars up there for since I've known him. And, you know, I just went through this process with the town of Bethel. Uh, Therese did a great job. Uh, Mr. Bump was involved. And we finally have some at least cautionary signage at the at the end of Hooper Hollow intersecting with the Bethel Mountain Road. You'll notice that the, there's a one sign that uh, has the Hooper Hollow Road identified, and then there's another sign that says, watch for turning traffic. Um, Bill, I know he's going through trouble, but pulling out from Hooper Hollow onto Bethel Mountain Road is taking your life in your hands. The people come over at 80 miles an hour, and it's still not slowing them down. And, you know, I said to Therese, I said, you know, um, she said, no, she said to me, she said, you know, Robert, it's really weird in the state of Vermont. You cannot lower a speed limit. You can raise a speed limit, but the state will not allow you to lower one. Because I believe up on Bill Carlson's road, it should be 25 miles an hour. But it'll take 20 years for some legislation to... Um, I, you know, change that state rule. Definitely, so, and unfortunately, even if they do it 25 miles an hour, people will probably drive just as fast as they drive now, just because it's um right. Yeah, that's the nature no, of I, um, people well, driving like on a back on, road. If, yeah. if you get on Route 89 and the speed limit says 70, 65, most people will do 74, and just to make yeah. certain cert they're under the uh, wire. Yeah. But um. There's a couple Maybe when things. we keep getting smarter cars, they'll have cars that are self-limiting that are only allow themselves to drive as fast as the posted speed limit. It, it, it probably will come to that. Well, I don't know where their destination is and what hourly rate they're gaining, but someone should just, uh, you know, maybe Frank and you, June, should just go up there and hang out for a half an hour, half like midday. I believe that it's uh, happening. That's not a question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, there's a couple other things. Um, I just want uh, Martha to know this. And Patty and I attended a state representative open meeting uh, meeting at the um, up in Granville. I think it's almost two years ago. And the secretary of state made it very clear very clear that any any digital content shared by selected or appointed members of the select board or town officials, especially during a meeting, which includes texting during a meeting, is is real a, a, a pretty serious situation. So I th there are a few people that I see texting on Zoom that should probably request a, uh, a document regarding open meeting rules and law oh, um, from the state of Vermont. That's, that's, that's um, okay. Anything else well, it, it, to it, talk it, about? Well, the problem is, the problem I don't is see anybody that, texting here right now. And I don't, well, I don't. Know, if you, uh, 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 Doom, if you watch the Orca Media videos, for the last year, um, you will see texting uh, by certain people that aren't aware that they they cannot text during a public meeting. It's it's um, okay. I think just because people might be touching their phones doesn't mean that they're texting. Um, yeah, we, I'm sorry. We've used our, 
just because people are touching their phones does not mean they're texting. And why would someone why would someone text their, touch their phone if they're not texting? Because when we have the five minute limit, we use our phones as the timer. Um, oh, if someone that, if someone's but, trying but that, to, but, but that's not announced at the beginning of the meeting. It, so it is not, when it comes into play. Then yeah. when we do feel the need to time public comments, we do announce that at the beginning of the meeting. Well, I we would did think, not this, I would that, think yeah. the chair, the chair would designate the minutes, the timing of the of the meeting. Yeah. Not so that someone... that would be a situation where we would maybe wish we had done that in this meeting. But um, but also we'll, we will people uh, that can't come in on Zoom. We also we'll will use us. our phones to look up information if someone has a question about something that was communicated, and we'll look up a date, a time when is a meeting going to happen. So there's that you're well, you're assuming that people are texting, but um, I can assure you, I I um, I think I have responded to texts when my wife is is texted me asking me can i take dinner out of the oven how much longer is the meeting going to go and so that would be the only time that i've texted during a select board meeting but it's not in amongst the um other members of the select board well, i don't know about well, uh, you guys but, yeah. mr um, you know anyone that's stepping in even though there's only six of us here tonight uh, especially a new landowner watching the meeting, um, he, he, like any smart person, would say that something's not right. Cooking dinner has nothing to do with the town meeting. Even if the meeting That's why I don't bring it up. <laughs> no, I, I yeah. don't, think, I don't yeah. think laughter is appropriate. Well, just, Robert, I'm you just, know what? If, what? Um, could you, we've got your point, and um, and um, there's no need to beleaguer the fact, but we understand that that it is inappropriate to text amongst ourselves and and try and hide anything from the public meetings because <laughs> and and we don't, we don't do that. We don't do that. It's well, it's pretty clear the the public open meeting laws. Yeah. What I would recommend to the town of Rochester, like Bethel, is that each select board member and appointed um, or hired people have a designated cell phone specifically for town use and nothing else because there's major liability with it. That's all okay. I'm trying to say. All I'm right. not trying to be a jerk. Thank you. I'm just trying to alert you guys that it, yeah. it can, well, it can thank turn you. into a serious problem. All right. Okay, so noted. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, anyone else have some concerns to talk about? Then uh, I think we're going to close the open meeting and move into executive session to um, discuss real estate and employee issues. Thank you. Um, Martha has a question. Oh, what? One more question. Yes, Martha. You're on mute. Oh, yeah, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay. I just wondered, um, I, obviously I can't stay for executive session. So if is this, um, are either of those items, real estate or employees, something that you might possibly make a decision about when you come out of it? So I should call the town office tomorrow to find out if there's a decision that was made. It's employee review. This employer, um, yeah, there's no significant decisions, yeah. I don't think that, but. So I don't, need to, I, don't, I don't need to worry about calling Julie tomorrow to, to get it to find you out. You can always call her and, and and if there is something that that's um that a decision that was made and important then she okay. can let you know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank hey, you. Um, okay. June. Okay, thank June. you very much. Hello. You're welcome. Hello? June, I forgot to say, say this regarding Mr. Gephardt's uh, concern about the library. But years ago I I was asked to quote the window cleaning at the library. And there was one thing that I seriously noticed, as Mr. Gephardt has shared, that the north side of the library, the water is wicking up from the foundation into the clapboards and the structure. I, I always thought about, every time I pass the library, I think about it, that there should be uh, a contractor brought in, I believe, 
that should probably go at least 10 feet down and three feet or four feet wide and fill that area with really big crushed stone as a French drain because the water is just seeping under the building and up through the building. And I, I never really communicated that to anyone, but I believe that anything above uh, the first or second level is moisture coming up from the ground. So Jeff so Gephardt is still in there, so he can, um, no, he's not in there. Well, no. No. That's uh, he okay. left, uh, That's we'll okay. communicate that to Jeff and he, when he does his it's analysis of the it's building. Something to consider yeah. because superficial clabbered replacement isn't going to cure the big problem. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, listen, God bless. Thank you. Yeah. Night. All set. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Yep. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Record.